You're watching NASA TV. This is Mission Control Houston. Good morning. You are getting a live look from inside of the International Space Station. Right now, two spacewalkers are preparing to exit the hatch to begin a planned six and a half hour spacewalk uh, as part of continuing upgrades to uh, continue to upgrade the power system aboard the International Space Station. In the front of the frame to left to right is NASA astronauts Frank Rubio in the suit with the unmarked, uh, with no stripes, is NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. And to her right is NASA astronaut Josh Cassida. Start today's spacewalk, perhaps a little bit early. Uh, right now we're following the timeline ahead of schedule uh, and now coming to you live at the final steps of preparation of getting these two spacewalking astronauts ready for their expedition. For both of the spacewalkers today, for Wakata and Man, this will be their first spacewalk. And again, uh, Wakata is EV-1, the suit with the red stripes. Nicole Mann, uh, the suit with no stripes. Uh, this is U.S. Spacewalk 84, uh, and they'll be installed, installing mounting platforms, which are a requirement uh, to fit the new IROSA International Space Station rollout solar arrays on a future spacewalk. These modification kits required. There are four that are installed already, including with IROSAs, uh, and much of the work on the 1B power channel has already been accomplished. They really just need uh, to do some of the final steps to really make sure that one is fully, uh, fully constructed and ready for, to, to receive the IROSAs later this year. And Starts with EV-1 Koichi Wakata with the red stripes on his suit coming out the hatch first. EV-2 Nicole Mann will be handing out a bag that has cables in it and a large bag that has the mod kit struts in it. Koichi will put the cable bag onto his body restraint tether and be prepared to hand the strut bag to Nicole as she comes out of the hatch. Once they're in position, Koichi will start his translation up the CETA spur to get to the front face of the International Space Station to start his translation out toward the starboard part. He'll stop and attach his safety tether and Nicole's safety tether as their anchor point and then continue on out the starboard truss. Along the way, Koichi will stop and drop off his cable bag. Once that's in position, He'll continue translating starboard. As he moves along the truss, he'll stop and he'll put down what we call a green hook, which allows him to go the rest of the way. Nicole will close the thermal cover. She'll have the MMOD strut bag on her body restraint tether and follow the same path that Koichi did. Nicole Mann will follow Koichi's translation path as she gets to the solar ray alpha rotary joint and gets to the 1A work site. She'll stow the strut bag and restrain it in position. Once that's done, she'll make her way back to the crew and equipment translation aid attached to the mobile, mobile transporter and retrieve the articulating portable foot restraint with an extender. Once she has that attached to her body restraint tether, she'll make her way outboard towards the starboard end and her work site at the 1 Alpha Beta Gimbal Assembly. She'll install this foot restraint and position it for the work she's going to do shortly. Nicole will collect part of Wuggle, which is uh, sections of truss that are part of the mod kit assembly. This will become uh, the beginning backbone of the entire mod kit. These struts are put into position and bolted together. 
While Nicole is working on that, Koichi heads out to the 1B Beta Gimbal Assembly and tightens two collar bolts on the right-hand side and left-hand side of the 1 Bravo modkin. Koichi will translate back inboard and join Nicole at the 1A worksite. Nicole will translate over to the articulating portable foot restraint and ingress. Koichi positions the upper triangle and hands that up to Nicole. Nicole takes the upper triangle and drives four bolts to attach it to the beta gimbal assembly. Koichi hands up the lower strut and the mid strut and then translates to get into position to install them. Both crew members work together to drive the bolts on the right lower strut and secure it in place. Once the lower strut's installed, Koichi repositions to install the mid strut. Again, the two crew members work together to get the right mid strut in place and drive the bolts which hold it. Once the right struts are in place, Koichi goes back to the strut bag and hands up the mid strut and the lower strut to Nicole. Nicole ingresses the foot restraint and the two crew members work together to install the left hand lower strut. Once that's in place, they work together yet again to install the mid strut. Once all the struts have been put in place, they drive the final collar bolts which rigidize the whole system in place. They put the multi-layer insulation back in place to cover up all of the metal components. Koichi translates over to the right hand mid strut does the same collar bolts on that side. Once the collar bolts have been driven in place, Nicole can egress the foot restraint and start routing the IROSA cables. These cables will be installed once the IROSA flies up the summer of 2023. Koichi then routes the cables on the right hand side and that completes the installation of the mod kit. Crew will then translate back and stow the articulating portable foot restraint. And return the strut bag to the airlock. In the meantime, Nicole picks up a cable which is part of the DC to DC converter unit jumper. She'll install a cable at two different locations on the strut and then make her way back to the airlock. Both crew members will meet back at the airlock Open up the thermal cover. They'll stow the bags that they've taken out with them into the airlock. Nicole will lead back inside and Koichi will follow. They'll close the thermal cover and then the hatch inside 
and that will end USCBA 84. Thermal cover is open. Wakata now exiting the hatch. The HECA that was mentioned is the uh, high-definition camera that's mounted on the um, spacesuit's helmet. Wakata out the hatch. You can see um, when following along throughout the spacewalk, you'll be able to um, notice him by the suit with the red stripes. Nicole Mann, uh, call sign Duke. Um, she'll be coming out afterwards. Both of them will do a tether configuration check once again. They already did one inside the hatch. They'll do it again outside. Uh, configure their suits and make sure they have all the materials needed before they translate out. Okay, sir. Oh, okay, sir. Your umbilical is set. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now it's uh, Oh, it's clear. Okay. Now oh, it's out of the pouch, though. Yeah. Okay, copy. Good baseline hat for both of you. You can take a couple minutes here to do some translation adaptation. So play around with your body rotation, pitch, yaw, roll, various hand grips, translation without rotation, and try attaching a local tether and releasing both hands. Just a reminder, this first hour will set your medox for the rest of the EVA, so just take it nice and deliberate. Take it easy. And the journey begins now that uh, they've done all that they can on the outside of the uh, airlock's hatch, um, getting all of their tools, attaching it to their body restraint tether, making sure their tethers are in a good configuration, sort of doing an adaptation. Uh, now we're following Koichi Wakata with the high-definition camera, uh, and he's translating or moving out to the work site, so he's going to begin his journey now. Now we're getting high definition views. This is Nicole Mann, call sign Duke. She's wearing the suit with no stripes and she's got that giant bag with her. That's the strut bag that has the mounting platform uh, that they're going to be installing today. Both of them will be uh, working on the 1A channel. Koichi Wakata's got to make a stop first to work on the 1B. Um, but Nicole Mann's going to get uh, get started right away. So she's got that bag in tow. Uh, she'll be able to unbuckle uh, some of the straps that are holding those components in place, uh, retrieve some of the material and it is a they'll be installing it one at a time um, the ground teams have plenty of experience with this type of work this is this will be the sixth modification kit the sixth time that we've used these struts to attach to a, a mast canister um, so they're prepared for uh, any of uh, issues or troubleshooting they need to do along the way um, and that work will be being done soon right now we're just watching the translation or the movement Stand by, Koichi. You'll need to actually backtrack just a little bit. Let me give you a good handrail pass. Okay. Okay, so, uh, I come down a little bit and then, uh, Okay, copy that. I'm at the uh, tenth location of the cable bag.
again with the handrail toward the radiator using okay. 2219 and 2215. Copy that. You can translate out to S4 with 25. So a quick re recap of where we are. We're seeing both the helmet cameras of Koichi Bukata and Duke. Uh, on the left, Koichi Bukata working on the mid strut. There's uh, various components of the mounting platform. He's asking for the settings that are needed on his cordless power drill to drive some of the bolts. On the right side, Duke is preparing the work site for installing a mounting platform on the 1A channel, and she's working on the um, portable foot restraint. You can see sort of the area where her feet will soon go later. Okay, in the timeline, and making sure that that's in a good configuration. So they're both at two different work sites right now. From this view of uh, Duke's helmet camera, we can very clearly see the full build of the upper triangle. Uh, they've put uh, two of the three sections of the triangle together. Now, uh, the two of them working together to install the final part of that with Nicole Mann, Duke, uh, able to hold the one side of the strut. Um, Koichi Wakata has great access to that uh, final part of the upper strut. That's the right side of the uh, upper triangle. Additional turns, green light, 18.3, and both are black line flush. So, Chris, if I hand you this PCT, there's two bolts right in front of you. Okay. Copy that. 13 or 14, those are next. Okay. Tip, look at me. For you, as a reminder, no sudden movement on the mass canister or mod kit. Limit your lateral loads into the BGA. Avoid cyclic lighting, loading, and don't impart forces into the mod kit before they're fully installed. So this is a great shot of some of the work that's being done concurrently. You can see uh, EV2 Duke with the suit with no stripes uh, is ingressing or entering the portable foot restraint that was set up for her to access uh, some of the parts that are needed to install that upper triangle, which Koichi Wakata has in tow. Um, he went over to that cable bag that he stowed early on as he made his way out to the work site grabbing some of the cables. So he'll have the upper triangle and the cables in tow. Uh, and once uh, Nicole Mann or Duke is uh, inside the uh, portable foot restraint and in a good configuration, they'll do a handoff. Uh, so he'll be uh, handing off some of the components that she needs to, con to construct the mounting platform one at a time. Uh, and they'll work together to install this mounting platform on the cables to kind of tend it to the mounting bracket. Okay, what do you think, Duke? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't really see it. Okay. Whatever you think, Kariki. Okay. It's just got to come up and then go in. Okay, copy.
Uh, finagling and getting the upper triangle into the right rotation. Duke has successfully soft docked it to the upper part of the mast canister. Uh, that's the po point where the upper triangle is to be installed. So the next steps will be to use that uh, hand Thanks. drill, the po cordless power drill, to secure it in place with a few These bolts. PTC settings are out. Just how you're doing and how you feel about that big picture update. How are you feeling, Duke? Uh, feeling good? Yeah, okay. Sounds good. We can continue. Focus right, train. Stay there, stay there. Uh, right side of the heel, you come out to the left. Uh, heel to your left, right to your left, or heel only to your left. So, which foot? Right foot, heel, yeah. And then, heel down, uh, okay, and then, stop, stop, uh, go to the left, uh, right, heel to your left, right, and that's good, and stay there, and then, and then you're in. Okay, thank you. All right, sure. Good. Great work, guys. That was awesome coordination. Oh, wait, 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 just a second. Blue plate to have a little bit more of an arm. Maybe we, um, I hold on to the toe loop. So if I rotate the blue plate all the way around, would that help? And it was like a smooth squeeze yeah, maybe, to get yeah. it to move. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, let's I try that. I'm stuck. It was sticky the whole time. Yeah, let's try that. So, in order to do that, do you need to roll 90 degrees? Would that help? Or, because I don't know, can you grab onto here? So a quick recap, uh, it did take a little bit of work, but the duo did get the uh, portable foot restraint to the angle it needs to be to install that next section, the uh, right strut. So Koichi Wakata is going to get that and uh, hand it off to Nicole Mann once she gets uh, back into the foot restraint and at the right angle to access the bolts that she'll need to drive uh, to install that right strut. That's right, you'll be translating to the right sob spherical bearing on the mass canister right side and just report to us the spherical bearing alignment. Then you'll be grabbing the silver PGT from that WIFX handrail. Here's a good shot uh, of the two astronauts working on both ends of that lower right strut. So you see Nicole Mann is in the foot restraint. She's got access to the top part of the lower strut. That's towards the uh, upper triangle. Uh, she's got a pistol grip tool to uh, secure that to the top portion, and then um, Koichi Wakata at the bottom portion, securing the lower strut to the base of the mast canister. So from this uh, helmet camera view, we're looking from the vantage point of Duke, or uh, ast NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. You can see Koichi Wakata working on the base of the lower strut, Nicole Mann working on the, on the cables. Of course, the strut is really a support structure that allows the uh, IROSA, the International Space Station Rollout Solar Array, to be installed, but it does need to provide power, ultimately, to the International Space Station, so these cables uh, will be uh, positioned accordingly, uh, so that when the IROSA is installed on the mounting bracket, that uh, they'll be able to basically hook it up to the International Space Station and the power that will be drawn from the new solar arrays uh, can be sent to all of the appropriate downstream places uh, uh, on the International Space Station. So they're positioning those cables now so when they later uh, install the IROSAs, right now we're looking at uh, this summer to get the IROSAs up to the space station and installed, uh, that they'll be able to 14, hook it up. 15 turns with hey, from Koichi. Two 
copy. Two on the ten. M11. Green light, 3.6 on the torque for M9. Green, working on M10. Chris, you know, I'm going to have to get that MOI when I do the uh, extra MOI. Shift outside of my reach Copy, Duke, no problem. We'll take a glove hat and gauntlet check. Probably not going to be able to reach it, so that'll be a step for Koichi once he does his PGT, which, Koichi, you can do now. Okay, uh, say again, uh, Koichi, can you stow your PGT? Um, and next, release the ret, Duke's ret, from the mid-strut. Koichi, you'll pass that left mid-strut okay. to Duke. And then, Duke, you can ingress the APFR I, once that's stowed on your BRT. Okay. Getting a great view from the high definition helmet camera of Koichi Wakata, who's guiding uh, his spacewalking crewmate Nicole Mann, call sign Duke, through the ingress process of the APFR, the um, portable foot restraint. And so we're seeing up close how the heels actually ingress into the uh, portable foot restraint for it to, to lock uh, the astronaut into place uh, so that they can access the work site. Down. A little more heel down. Okay, now you're in. Okay, it's like, that's good, you're in. Awesome, thank you, Koichi. Awesome. Great. Awesome teamwork, guys. Looking really good. Okay, uh, Duke, it's coming okay. from your right side. I see it. Can you see it? Yeah, almost got it. Okay. Okay, I have the control. Oh, you have the control. There's that handoff. We're really just repeating the process that we saw on the uh, other side. Okay, copy five turns. We are expecting to use the torque wrench for this. So you'll be swapping the two-inch rigid from the silver PGT to the torque wrench with a good pull test, and then we'll continue driving M21. It's a quick overview of installing these struts um, with the astronauts at both ends of the strut. They alternate uh, driving the bolts, so it was um, 
Koichi Wakata, who started with his pistol grip tool. Once he was done, it went back to Nicole Mann. Now it's back to Koichi Wakata, and then Nicole Mann will do it again. There's only one bolt, but they just address that same bolt two times while alternating. Um, part of the procedure is to just make to avoid anything like stripping or, or anything like that. So right now you see uh, Koichi Wakata using that torque wrench, and that's really just to make sure it's super secure. He's also going to do a pull test, just a quick tug, just to make sure there's no wiggle, and it's uh, truly installed. Um, and so they'll continue to alternate. Nicole Mann has one more um, uh, one more time has to address that bolt on the on the top side next to the mounting bracket and then they'll wrap up uh, with the multi-layer insulation making sure it looks good before getting to the left mid strut and uh, that'll be the last component of the um, of installing the mounting bracket before they go around and uh, secure the MLI and address any last minute items, but that's the last component um, needed for installation. Zena, I'm looking at, I don't know if you see this the heck of view, but it just doesn't go in. Looks like it's uh, vertically aligned to me. It's uh, symmetrical on the upper side and lower side. But the left side of the pad does not go yeah. in. Yeah, okay, copy all of I that, Luigi. On the, uh, We've got some troubleshooting okay. steps for you here. If you take it off, you'll want to look on the underside of that okay. side pad, and we're going to have you check that the okay. ball detents, there are two of them on the side pad, check that they can be depressed. You can use the hook on one of your uh, adjustables or a ret. Okay, let me check. Okay, Koichi, so on the right side, you'll see there's kind of a tongue on the soft capture mechanism on the side pad. Yes, I see that. Yeah, so that tongue will have to yeah. fit into a gap on the right side. There shouldn't be much of a sweet spot, but just try uh, installing it partially and moving it up and down to see if it will slot into place. We'll give it one more try. If you can go up and down with that side pad. And then push in on the left side. If Duke can apply some force as well, give you a little extra leverage. Could you push in towards, towards me? I know that telescoping feature is probably not helping you here. Wrap up. Uh, we need to get into some cleanup steps and get you guys back inside. So what we want you to do is, Duke, you'll compress that mid strut, put it on your BRT, get it back in the strut bag that straps two and three. Koichi, you can close out those pictures, and then we'll be having you help with cleanup as well. Okay, copy that. And hey, Koichi, before you depart, if you can tuck that MLI a little bit better, just make sure that everything's covered there. See that? Yeah, are you okay if I don't see this uh, Velcro through these little C rings? Hey, for a Velcro it down. Yeah, you're good okay, to leave it as you have yeah. it. That's totally fine. Okay. And I think we're actually going to have you uh, okay. leave this strut bag as is and have you go work tool gathered for the cable bag. But stand by one, let me clarify. Um, the two astronauts, Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata, uh, out at the uh, outside of the International Space Station have installed several of the struts needed to construct the modification kit on the 1A channel. They were not able to successfully install the left middle strut. Um, the side pad on the mast canister did not engage properly. So right now they're working on cleanup steps. They're stowing a lot of their tools and including the left middle strut. Uh, This is your safety center, yeah? yeah? This is my uh, safety center that is going through your maybe workstation area with, uh, let's see, 
I already uh, uh, put the uh, the red brakes on the output. Wakata making his way back to the airlock. This whole time he's been. Attach any tethers to it. Now's the time. Okay. Zena, can I start working on my SCU now, or do I need to wait? You can. We'll also have you receive that. 